Before I go about registering devices, I'm going to create a new lookup zone. That'll be a reverse lookup zone. And this will be for the site B server VLAN. So that's the 192, 168, 120. I'm going to allow both non-secure and secure dynamic updates. I'm going to do the same, but this time for site C server VLAN. And that would be the 192, 168, 130 subnet. And the reason why I'm making these reverse lookup zones is because I'm going to add forward lookup zone hosts in order for me to be able to build out a CUCM at site B and then also a CUCM at site C. Right here, I'm making the site B CUCM publisher, and we'll give that an IP address of .5 as well. Just like at headquarters, it's .5, but it's on the 110 network. And here we'll plug in, I actually got to put in the host name here. That's going to be site C or SC, CUCM PUB for publisher. And then that one will have the IP address of 192.168.130.5. So .5 will always be the publisher regardless of the site. Now I'll jump over to my ESXi and I'll deploy a virtual machine from OVF or OVA. And I'll make this my site B CUCM publisher. And then I'll select the OVA for CUCM. Then once we get that open, we're going to deploy it just like we've deployed any of the other servers, except we're going to go on the server VLAN for site B. And I don't want to power it on automatically because I have to point it to the bootable ISO file. Now I'll do the same thing for creating the site C, CUCM publisher. However, I'm going to put it on the site C server VLAN so that way it has the proper network. In order for the phones to be able to contact the CUCM, they need to have an IP address. And there's multiple different ways that we can do that. We can sign it statically, or we can configure a DHCP server here on the CUCM, which once you add the DHCP server, you can put some of the DHCP information here. But I believe typically people just put the host server in here. And then rather than choosing to configure these parameters here, once they have the server defined, they'll go into the DHCP subnet and when you click add new, you can define a DHCP server based off of what was just shown on the other page. And then you can fill out these different required fields like subnet IPv4 address, start address, end address. You can also do a secondary start address and end address. This one here is not a required field, but in my opinion, it should be because you need to have that primary router. Another required field is the subnet mask. I recommend putting the domain name if you have a domain configured and you and you should put the primary DNS as well. The TFTP server can you can put the name of it if you do option 66. Most people do the primary TFTP IPv4 address using option 150. You can put a secondary one there as well. But um, I'm actually not going to configure DHCP here. I'm going to do it on my Windows server. So if you go into administrative tools, you have the DHCP option here. And I have my IPv4 or IPv6 pools that I can create. I'm going to go with the IPv4. As you can see here, I misnamed my server VLAN. It says voice VLAN, but I'm just going to right click on that and say properties and change it from saying HQ voice VLAN to saying HQ server VLAN. Once that correction is made, I'll hit apply and OK. Then I'll come over to IPv4 and right click. Then I'll choose new scope. We'll click next and we'll name the new scope, which I'm going to name it HQ voice VLAN. I'm not going to give it a description. I'll just click next. I'll give it a start IP address that will allow me to have enough IP addresses at the bottom of my subnet range to be able to Put it on things like the voice gateway, the, the um, default gateway, the switch, my servers, etc. So I'll go with 100. That gives me, you know, 98 or so IP addresses. And then on the top end, I'll push it all the way out to 200 as well, leaving me a couple of IP addresses at the end of the range. Um, here's where we can exclude addresses. I already kind of did that by having the start and the end. IP addresses leaving some free 
at the beginning and at the end of my subnet. So I'll just skip this part. I'm not going to put anything in here. We could if we wanted to, but on the DHCP scope for on the iOS side, we are actually going to want to exclude addresses and I'll show that later. You can modify the lease time and you can configure the DHCP options. This is something we absolutely want to do so that our phones can have, for instance, a default gateway like what we're about to configure right now. So once we have the IP address of the default gateway here, we can click add, which will put it into the group there into the box. I'll leave the parent domain the way it is, but the DNS servers that you see, I, I actually want to get rid of those and put in the one that has the IP address where the third octet is uh, 111, which is our voice VLAN for a headquarters. I want the phones to have a DNS server that's on the same subnet as them. So now that I've added that and I've removed the others, I'll click next. I'll skip this wins servers option because it doesn't really pertain to me. And I'll say next here to have the option to activate the scope right now. And so you can see that my top one where the HQ voice VLAN is, it has a status of active. If we go into the scope and we go into the scope options, you can see here that we have uh, the router, the DNS server, and the domain name, but let's take a look through the list real quick because there's that option 150 that I was talking about earlier, which we need in order for the phones to know what their TFTP address is going to be. And as we go through this list, you can see there are a lot of different options. However, once we get to the bottom, you'll notice that there is no option listed here for the option 150 we saw option 66 but just not option 150 so what do we have to do here we have to go back over to the left and right click on ipv4 and then choose the option set predefined options and then from here we click add and i'm going to name it option 154 phones and then i'm going to change the data type to be ip address because that's what we're going to put in there and for the code, we're going to set it to be 150. That's the DHCP option code. I'll click OK there, and then I'll click OK again. Now we can go back under the DHCP scope for my voice VLAN, and we'll go to scope options, right click, configure options, and we'll scroll down all the way to the bottom. And we have our option 150 here. I'm going to put in the IP address of a TFTP server in my HQ cluster which I'm going to be using my publisher as my primary TFTP for this cluster and even in the other clusters. But I could also use my subscribers as they're running the TFTP service as well. Let's transition over to the switch and take a look at that. Here is the output of show VLAN brief. And if you see, none of these VLANs are associated with any ports. If we scroll down a little bit, here's a snippet of show CDP neighbor detail. And you can see the phone that I have plugged in is an 8851 and it's plugged into gigabit ethernet 08. Also, if we go down to check out that interface, we'll see that it's bare bones. It has the default configuration. There's no access VLAN or anything like that. But I did go in and configure the interface. I gave it a description, HQ phone with DM1000. I made it a switch port mode access. I also did switch port voice VLAN 111. That's going to be the HQ voice VLAN. And I put in the command spanning hyphen tree port fast and then hit enter. It gave it the um, final bit, which is edge. So I didn't put in the actual edge part, but the iOS did it on its own. If we scroll down a little further, you'll see I ran show VLAN brief again. And we have gig 0 slash 8 associated with VLAN 111. That's because I did the switch port voice VLAN 111. And then now if we transition over to the phone, we can see that it's detecting the network. But we can go into the settings and we'll take a look at option number six, which is admin settings. Then we'll hit option one for Ethernet setup. Option one again for IPv4 setup. Actually, first, let's take a look down here. You can see that the domain has been learned. The operational VLAN ID has been learned as well. There's nothing else down here that we would 
really be looking at that um, we've discussed in the video up to this point. However, if we hit option one to go into the IPv4 setup, we'll see DHCP is on. We'll also be able to see the phone's IP address, which is the start of our range. Subnet mask, default router, our DNS server that we put in here, our option 150 IP address that we added to the DHCP scope. And I believe that that's all that we would see in here that comes from the uh, setup that we've done so far. Now let's jump over and take a look at a packet capture. We can see that the phone is sending to the TFTP server a get for its config file and the TFTP server is returning back 404 not found. That's expected behavior because right now the CUCM is not set up to have auto registration. As you see here, auto re registration is disabled. And that's something that we're going to see on all three of the nodes in the cluster. Since auto registration is disabled, we'll have to go to device, phone, and we'll add new, right? If we click find, you see there's nothing here. So we'll add new and we'll go to check out our device type, which is an 8851. Going back in here, we'll go to the drop down menu and find our Cisco 8851. Now we hit next and we're going to need to provide the MAC address. And in order to get the MAC address, we can go back to our uh, switch output from show CDP neighbor detail and we can copy out that MAC address here. I'm going to give it a description, which will be matching up with the description that I put on the interface where the phone's plugged in. And then we'll give it a device pool for San Jose. My San Jose phones are going to be the 1000 directory numbers. We'll give it standard 8851 SIP phone button template. We don't have to give it a soft key template, but I will. And we'll have the standard phone, standard common phone profile, which from a previous video we went through and set that up to have web access enabled and other settings as well. I'll set the location to be my San Jose location to line up with the device pool. And for the user, I'll set it to user one. And then we'll scroll down a little bit and there's some options that we have to set in terms of uh, security. Right, so uh, this is our protocol specific information. We need to put the device security profile. I'm doing standard non-secure. I'm going to do the standard SIP profile as well. And at this point we can save it. So we'll click okay. Now, if this were a skinny device, it would register fine, but this SIP device is still not going to be able to register. That's because it needs a directory number in order to register. That's something unique about SIP phones that you wouldn't have seen with skinny phones. So in order to add that directory number, we'll go over to add a new DN. And I'm going to give it the DN that we've already talked about, which is 1000. And I'm not going to put it in a partition or anything. That's stuff that we will cover in another video down the road. Now that this device has been configured on the system and we gave it a directory number, we should be able to go see that it's configured or sorry, that it's registered. And if it's not registered yet, it will be registered soon. Uh, we can see it's not registered here. Now it is registered and it was able to register to the fully qualified domain name of the CUCM as well. There's a couple reasons for that. Uh, one of them being that we gave the phone a DNS server enabled it, so that it's able to actually resolve that uh, FQD end. Now the reason why it registered with sub A is because it's using the San Jose device pool, which is using the San Jose call manager group. If we take a look at the call manager group for San Jose, we'll see here that HQCUCM sub A is listed first. That's something that we did in a previous video where we were configuring our device pools, call manager groups and everything else. We're going to switch gears again and we're going to look at the iOS side of things. I already showed how to do the DHCP in the CUCM interface and I showed how to do it on the server. Here we're going to talk about how to do it in iOS. So as you can see, I did some excluded addresses. I said that I don't want to give out any IP addresses from dot one to dot 99. I also don't want to give out any IP addresses from 201 to 254. Now that will make it line up with 
the DHCP scope that we created on the Windows Server. Moving over to the IP DHCP pool command, you give it a, a name. The name I gave it was uppercase SB underscore uppercase voice. And in there we can make a, a network, which you can see is my site B voice network. And you give it the, uh, the slash, which is a slash 24. You give it the default router address, the option 150 IP address, and the domain name as well as the DNS server. So with that DHCP school with, with that DHCP excluded command and the IP DHCP pool command will be pretty well set up. Now I also on the switch went to interface gigabit 12 and set it up to uh, be on voice VLAN 121 as you can see in the show VLAN brief output as well as the interface output there. And so with all of that set up the way that I want it to be, we can now plug the phone into Gigabit Ethernet 12 and we can head over to the site BCUCM and configure the phone on there just like how we did at headquarters. Or we can even set it up to do auto registration. I decided to set my site BCUCM up to do auto registration and I have it you know, set up to go for a range of IP addresses, or sorry, a range of directory numbers from 5000 to 5009. So if we hopped over and looked at the phone's web interface, you can see here that the directory number is 5000. And if we take a look at the network page, scroll down, you'll see the CDP neighbor device ID is my lab switch and the CDP neighbor port is the port that I configure the phone to be on. Now if we go back up and we take a look at the network setup, we'll see some information from the DHCP pool that we configured on the switch such as the domain name. If we take a look at the IP address of the DHCP server, you'll see that's the IP of our uh, virtual interface, our VLAN interface. DHCP is set to yes, so we get the IP address starting at 100 because the excluded range ended at 99. Here's our subnet mask, our default router, our DNS server that we configured in there as well. And again, that option 150 IP address that we had set up before. There's the operational VLAN ID that we set on the interface. And we can see that we're registered to the fully qualified domain name of our site BCUCM. I'll go ahead and end the video out here, but I will be adding my other phones to the setup. And I hope that there was something of value in this video for you. I'll see you in the next one.